Hello everyone, I hope you all had a great week. Welcome to Infoscope, I'm your host, Anna Kim. Today we have some of the latest from the IT and science world. Let's first take a look at what's coming up in the first segment. This summer has been one of the hottest summers to date, and yes, temperatures have cooled down, but you may still have to be very careful about heat strokes. Apparently, being exposed to heat can affect both your brain and your heart. We'll have more on this in just a moment. We also have more updates on science for children. Last month, the 20th Korean Creative Science Festival was held at Coex Hole, and there were many interactive experiences for children of all ages. Here are some of the highlights from this year's event, next on Briefing Scope. From basic sciences to the latest in technology, the 20th Korea Creative Science Festival invited children to apply what they learned in science classes to real life. The event offered various programs merging science and performances, exhibitions and games, and offered fun activities for students on summer vacation. New research shows that blood vessel dilation due to heat exposure can have a fatal effect on the brain and the heart. As the temperature rises, blood vessels dilate and blood becomes sticky, which can block vessels in the brain. Moreover, as excess blood enters the dilated capillaries, the heart receives less blood than it needs. Experts say that staying out of the heat is the best preventative measure. Well, I'm just glad it's September. These last few months were just way too hot. But speaking of the summer season, I'm sure everyone had their own way of getting through the record-breaking summer heat. Some of us drank a lot of ice drinks, while some of us stayed indoors with the AC on. And some people cooled down by watching horror movies. So the question is, does watching horror movies really cool you down? We have the answer for you in just a bit. And staying on the topic of movies, one of the biggest blockbuster hits this summer was Train to Busan. Just to recap, it's a zombie thriller film set almost entirely in a speed train filled with zombies and humans. Now, of course, the whole story is fiction, but did you ever wonder, if the plot was real, how long will the human race survive? Here's what will happen if Train to Busan became reality. Take a look at our next segment, Industry Inside. This is a scene from the latest Korean zombie movie, Train to Pusan. A person infected by an unidentified virus gets on a KTX train for Pusan. The virus spreads uncontrollably, and passengers are turned into zombies. What if something like this actually happened in real life? Professor Robert Smith of Canada's Ottawa University applied this situation to a mathematical model used to analyze the spread of viruses like the Ebola virus. The model predicts how far and quickly a disease will spread. In a situation like the movie where the disease has no incubation period, the entire global population will be infected in four days. Then, can a person become a zombie as in the movie? Virus experts say that it is possible if a mutated virus attacks specific parts of the brain. As in rabies, mutated viruses can infect the brain by entering through open wounds. Consequently, an infected person can exhibit aggressive patterns such as biting and, in severe cases, muscle convulsions. However, there have been no actual reports of zombies. Zombies are, for now, relegated to the realm of fiction. When heat waves in tropical nights hit Korea, theaters and television show horror movies. It's commonly said that watching a horror movie can send shivers down your spine. To see what exactly happens to the body, we checked a person's skin temperature every 10 minutes. 20 minutes into the movie, the chest temperature fell by 1.3 degrees, while the palms were cooler by around 1.7 degrees. This drop in temperature is linked to the sympathetic nervous system, which reacts when a person is involved in heavy exercise, a state of fear, or anger. 
When a person watches a horror movie and is shocked, the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system shrinks blood vessels, disrupting the supply of warm blood. Sweat evaporates, which leads to a drop in temperature. 교감신경 반응 중에 피부의 혈관을 수축시켜 열 손실을 적게 하거나 소름이 돋고 몸이 떨리는 반응은 추울 때도 일어나는 반응입니다. 이러한 반응은 마치 우리가 추위를 느끼고 있다고 착각하게 할수 있습니다. With their blockbuster fun and chilling effects, there's a reason horror movies are a regular every summer. This is a frigate bird from the Galapagos Island that is capable of flying thousands of kilometers nonstop for more than 10 days. A group of researchers analyzed a frigate bird's brainwaves to find out how it can fly so far for so long. They discovered that frigate birds fly even when asleep. When a frigate bird is in the air, one half of its brain focuses on staying level and looking out for predators or obstacles, while the other half falls into a state of sleep. Al, al dormirse un solo hemisferio, digamos, es el, el izquierdo se cierra solo un ojo, el, el opuesto, el derecho. Entonces mantienen un ojo abierto y un hemisferio activo. Y, ese hemisferio, y esa, la importancia de eso es que el ave, al, al solo dormir uniemisféricamente, the blue section of the brain waves represents a sleeping state while the green represents being awake. A frigate bird sleeps in 10 second bursts and in total less than one hour a day. Que, es, que, que, que de hecho el cerebro puede eh, descansar, es decir, dormir por periodos muy cortos de tiempo, 12, 15 segundos máximo. Pero a lo largo de las 24 horas acumulan unos 40, 42 minutos. En it has been known that some animals like dolphins, alligators, and chickens sleep with one eye open. But this is the first time that scientists confirmed birds can sleep while flying. The next question to be answered is how birds can survive on significantly lesser sleep compared to other animals. This research and its results were published in the global academic journal, Nature. I always wondered how birds could fly for so long, and well, now I know. Moving on to the next part of our show, actually, golfers may be interested in this next story. Walking an 18-hole golf course may be quite slow and tiring, even with carts. But guess what? One inventor came up with flying golf carts, which, in my opinion, may be practical on and off the green. And in other news, Korean science is changing the lives of people in many developing countries. In fact, scientists have said that they have the potential solutions to heating and water problems around the world. Let's take a closer look at these technologies and other developments on Tech Peak. This is Ulan Batar, the capital of Mongolia. Here, nighttime temperatures in winter fall as low as negative 40 degrees Celsius. For lower-income people who live in gurs or traditional tents, stoves are the only source of heating. Even so, these stoves lose heat quickly, making them ineffective during long cold nights. Korean technology has stepped in to provide warmth. Korean development-oriented NGO Good Neighbors developed a heat storage device and distributed 40,000 of such devices for free. It works by reversing the flow of heat from the stove through the stovepipe. 열을 저장하는 곳이 추가적으로 더 있다면 연료를 덜 사용하게 되고 난방 시간도 당연히 길어져서 난방비를 크게 아낄 수 있습니다. Korea's appropriate technology was used to tackle drinking water issues in a village in Fiji, which was hit by a large cyclone earlier this year. A special sheet with holes smaller than the diameter of a strand of hair filters out 99% of pathogens. One liter of clean water can be made every 10 minutes without any need for external power. Such essential technological aid is giving hope to developing nations. Here at a golf course, a flying vehicle overtakes a conventional golf cart. This is a flying golf cart created by a global sunglasses manufacturer and a jetpack manufacturer. Called the BW Air, the cart uses a 210 horsepower engine and two propellers to climb to 900 meters and fly up to 80 kilometers per hour. 
The BW Air is capable of vertical takeoff and landing, allowing it to easily bypass trees and other obstacles. On top of that, it leaves very few marks on the grass when it lands. Golfers on board the BW Air can survey the course from above and tackle the course without the help of a caddy. You're looking at the course, how to play the course, how to shoot lower scores. It's almost an unfair advantage. This is a game changer. The cart has space for golf clubs, balls, and shoes, just like a conventional buggy. The BW Air may be available as early as December of 2017 at the cost of $200,000 U.S. dollars. Quantum computers use tiny particles to operate unlike conventional computers that use electric circuits. Currently, regular computers store data as binary bits, one or zero, but quantum computers use qubits, which can be in the state of one and zero at the same time. Topological insulators are rising as the next generation low power material for quantum computers as they are internally insulated, but the surface can conduct electricity without any energy loss. Researchers have developed a technology to control the electric properties of the surface of topological insulators, potentially accelerating the development of spintronic materials and the commercialization of quantum computers. Researchers from the Korea Basic Science Institute, Greece, and the United Arab Emirates have discovered orbital magnetic properties and the two-dimensional electron gas state of the surface of topological insulators. The researchers observed such properties when they inserted a layer of bismuth in bismuth selenide, a notable substance in three-dimensional topological insulators causing electron doping. Thanks to this research, we may have a way to control electron spins, something deemed difficult by scientists, and control electrical conduction at the speed of light while using nearly no energy. This research and its results were published in the NPG Asia Materials, an academic journal by nature that specializes in materials science. I feel like my generation has really seen the whole evolution of computers, from old-fashioned bulky desktops to portable tablet PCs. And now the same generation may see quantum computers being commercialized. It's even cooler because just a few months ago here on Infoscope, we were actually talking about supercomputers, yet we already have a more advanced quantum computer. Technology is definitely moving faster by the day. Now it's already time for me to wrap up today's show. Keep in mind that Chuseok, one of Korea's biggest holidays, is just around the corner in just three days. Our Arirang TV Infoscope team and I hope you enjoy the long weekend with your family, friends, and of course, good food. Don't forget that we will be back next week with more from IT and Science. Thank you for watching and happy Chuseok.